the king! <laughs> Welcome to Kids on the Path. My name is Marge McCarthy. I've uh, first walked a labyrinth in 1998 at a retreat and found it a really, really powerful experience. Since that time, I've been very involved in, in labyrinth work. And the most exciting part of the labyrinth work I've done is with kids. I think the fact that I was a school psychologist made it uh, the most obvious thing for me to do, to work with children and the labyrinth, put my two loves together. I uh, approached the labyrinth for children with looking at ways that it could improve their personal development, help them deal with problems in their lives, help them deal with stress and with grief. And I found that the labyrinth experience really works. Kids love it, they respond to it immediately, and they benefit from it greatly. My husband Bob has been actively involved with me in constructing school labyrinths in Santa Fe. Before we talk about labyrinths in schools, he's going to give you an idea of the long history of labyrinths. This is a story, a short story, about labyrinths long ago and far away and up to modern times. Far away in India, in a city called Goa, about 4,000 years ago, they made a labyrinth by chiseling into solid rock. That was hard work without power tools. More recently, about 2,000 years ago, the people in ancient Greece knew about labyrinths and must have appreciated them very much because they put a labyrinth on one of their coins, just as we put George Washington and Abraham Lincoln on ours. Their coins circulated all over the ancient world, Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East, and certainly spread the labyrinth design. About the same time as the labyrinth in ancient Greece, another labyrinth was created on the north coast of Russia near the Arctic Circle. A little over 800 years ago, a labyrinth of cut stone was built into the floor of the beautiful cathedral in the town of Chartres, France. We know that this labyrinth was used as a substitute for the pilgrimage to Jerusalem in the Middle Ages. A famous labyrinth, it is still used by pilgrims today. At another town in France, about 500 years ago, a different and very beautiful labyrinth was also built into the floor of this cathedral. Perhaps 400 years ago, back in the 1600s, people in Iceland built a labyrinth of natural stones in sight of one of their great volcanoes. About 350 years ago, people in Hilton, England, laid out a turf labyrinth in the center of their village. It's been cared for ever since, and you're welcome to visit the village and walk it. Imagine cutting the same grass for 350 years. Native Americans in the Southwest have used the man in the maze design in jewelry and in baskets. They call it man in the maze, but uh, if you take a close look, you'll see that it's a labyrinth, a single path from the outside to the center. Near Taos, New Mexico, there's a labyrinth carved into the rock along with traditional Native American rock art and a rider on horseback. In 1892, a labyrinth was used as a repeating image in the wall decorations of Watts Chapel. And a little over a century ago, in the early 1900s, they built a beautiful labyrinth on the floor of Ely Cathedral. And there's a wonderful modern copy of it at a home in Santa Fe, New Mexico. More recently, in 1996, school children in Copenhagen, Denmark, celebrated the coming of spring by laying out a labyrinth on the grass of a public park. This concludes our tour of labyrinths around the world from long ago and far away and up to here and now. It seems that the labyrinth experience continues to have appeal and be beneficial for the walkers. Labyrinths are still, after 4,000 years, being made and walked. We can know some of the intentions people have today when they walk a labyrinth. To calm down, to have time with themselves, to meditate or to pray, 
to unite a group with common hopes, to help deal with grief, to stimulate creativity, to solve problems or answer questions, or just to have insight into themselves. In the past 30 years or so, thousands of labyrinths have been built around the world and are being used today. While we've been building and walking labyrinths in schools in Santa Fe, people in South Africa have been walking labyrinths to help bring together blacks and whites after their cruel years of apartheid. Look at this modern labyrinth painted on canvas with day glow paint. Isn't it amazing that in our sophisticated, high-tech world, an ancient tool like the labyrinth has become so popular again? Today we know of school labyrinths in at least 18 states, as well as in Germany, Scotland, and South Africa. Here in Santa Fe, we have built labyrinths in 10 schools. We know that these students are helped in many of the same ways as adults. One girl reported that she came to school upset because her parents were fighting, but after she walked the labyrinth, she was able to feel more calm and could concentrate on her work. Guidance counselors and teachers have used walking the labyrinth as a way to deal with conflicts between students. The kids might call it chilling out, taking the time to calm down after an angry confrontation. After walking the labyrinth together, the students have been able to really talk about their differences. Children who have experienced a loss find that walking the labyrinth helps in the grieving process. Some teachers have reported that students even do better on tests if they walk the labyrinth first, maybe because it helps lower the student's anxiety. Walking the labyrinth allows for creativity and intuition to flower. Studies have shown that we are more able to connect with the right side of our brain after walking the labyrinth. Each child has a different experience each time he or she walks the labyrinth. It is not always momentous, but it always seems to have a positive effect. Sometimes it is just fun. Building a labyrinth can add much needed hands-on learning to the classroom curriculum. History, geography, mathematics, science, and social studies can all take on new depth and excitement. Integrating the labyrinth with curriculum enhances the learning experience for children. Many people ask what the difference is between a labyrinth and a maze. Mazes are puzzles. They have blind alleys and are meant to challenge and tease us. They're for fun, or some may say for frustration. Labyrinths are different. There is just one path from the entrance to the center. Like the path of life, there are sudden twists and turns, and it seems a long way to go. But if you keep putting one foot in front of the other, you will get to the center. Walking the labyrinth tends to be thoughtful and meditative, a time for quiet. Of course kids love to race through at times, but at other times they walk slowly and become thoughtful and introspective. Now we will briefly talk about the steps that we suggest you follow for bringing the labyrinth experience to a school. Please keep in mind that each school is different. What follows are suggestions based on our experience in Santa Fe. What actually happens will depend on the needs of your school and the people involved. Kathy Fleming is a Santa Fe teacher who has worked extensively with children in the labyrinth. She will join us in presenting these steps. We are here at the Labyrinth at E.J. Martinez Elementary School in Santa Fe, New Mexico. We created this labyrinth uh, two years ago using our gifted, talented class as the core class and the student coordinators. We started because Priscilla Logan, who was doing a lot of the oh, outdoor yes. classroom work, had suggested building a labyrinth as part of the outdoor classroom activities. And so another teacher, a first grade teacher and myself, decided that that was the project we wanted to tackle was building a labyrinth. When this idea was presented to us as, as far as using the outdoors as a classroom, what appealed to me was that it was something permanent that we were going to do that it wasn't just something that we do and in a few years it would be gone, that it's something that will be here for a long time to come. 
And of course, <laughs> being the typical teacher, um, all of the opportunities for learning that, that come out of building a labyrinth really appealed to me. At that time, I was doing the, um, the Gifted Talented program, and I knew it was something that these children could really learn from, and um, it was an incredibly wonderful experience for them. Um, they were an integral part from the very first planning until the day of building. The old adage, two heads are better than one, is true here. It helps to have a group of labyrinth enthusiasts, like ours, to figure out the best way to approach a school with the idea of building a labyrinth. It's important to talk about such things as resources in the community and the best way to go about approaching a school. The most essential step is to have someone from within the school be convinced that having a labyrinth would be of benefit to the children. When you talk to a potential contact person in the school, it is important to emphasize the benefits to the children, the school, and the community. You might want to show them this video. Now schedule a meeting with other people on the staff who are interested. Try to include the principal at this meeting. Be sure to have information available as to what the process will be, what resources are available, and what the responsibilities of the school will be. Ideally, the labyrinth should be easily accessible and where children can safely go to walk it on their own while still being observed by an adult. It should be in a place that's sheltered from noisy activities. We use seven circuit patterns in the elementary schools because we find that young children don't have the attention span required to walk the longer 11 circuit labyrinth. The easiest way to build a labyrinth, at least in Santa Fe's dry climate, is to form the pattern lines by laying stones on the ground. Other possibilities include making the lines with bricks set in the ground, painting the pattern on concrete or on asphalt, or building with concrete pavers. School labyrinths come in many shapes and forms. Encouraging children and their families to paint stones for the labyrinth makes this a community project. Don't forget that you can make temporary labyrinths out of all sorts of materials. For example, canned goods, which can be given away to needy families, or shoes, or pine cones, or all sorts of things. Be sure to meet with all teachers and staff, giving them some background information about the history and uses of labyrinths. When talking to teachers, it is important to emphasize the benefits to children. Also, review the classroom presentation that will be used with the children. Committed teachers are absolutely essential for the success of the project. I feel bad about getting an F, F in math. I thought of a plan to work harder. It makes me feel better. I figured out a way to talk to people to get their attention. It is better to talk than than to grab someone's neck when they are bugging you. We have found that the most effective way to involve the whole school is to do the presentation with each class, or at least each class level. At one school, the art teacher was trained to perform this role with her classes. By the day we actually build the labyrinth, all the children are familiar with why they are doing this and how they are going to use it. Include a brief history of labyrinths. Use a timeline like this one to show how long there have been labyrinths in the world. Use a world map with locations of the labyrinths around the world before 1900. The heart of the presentation is discussing the benefits of using the labyrinth. Children have said they calm down, they stop being sad, they think about things that are bothering them and figure out what to do about it. They also think about things they are thankful for and things they want to accomplish. It is important for the children to, to develop their own guidelines for walking the labyrinth. They are much more likely to develop a respect for the labyrinth if they are involved in creating the guidelines. We explain that if they are on the labyrinth alone, they can do whatever feels right to them. But when they are in a group, 
there must be guidelines to respect the needs of others. After some children had suggested things like, don't throw stones and don't push or shove, one girl suggested a general rule, stay in your own bubble. It is helpful for children to create labyrinths of their own using various art forms. There are pictures available of many, many different types and forms of labyrinths for ideas. We almost always have the children color or paint a diagram of the labyrinth which they will be building. Finger labyrinths can be demonstrated and used. Children can paste yarn or seeds on the lines of a labyrinth pattern and walk it with their fingers. Teachers have used their imaginations in applying labyrinth ideas to the curriculum, depending on the age of their students. For example, one teacher did a science lesson on estimation in which the children cut strings to the length they estimated it would be from the entrance to the center. The string lengths were measured and amounts added or subtracted. Another teacher had the children write invitations to their parents for the labyrinth building as a way of learning the skills of writing letters. Children also made posters to put up around the school to advertise the building of the labyrinth. At one school, two classes took the leadership in preparation for building the labyrinth. These classes made posters to place around the school to advertise the day of the labyrinth building and also encouraged the students to bring in painted stones. Students could also write a story about the labyrinth for a school or local newspaper. It is best to lay out the labyrinth pattern on the ground on the day before construction. <clears throat> we use surveyor flags and tape to mark the outer circle, the center, and especially the entrance lines and the turns. These are the parts most likely to cause confusion during construction. Here in New Mexico, we found the easiest technique for laying out the circles is to use a rope with the radius of each of the eight circles marked on it with surveyor's tape or paint. Be sure the markings cannot slip while you work. As you rotate the rope around a pin in the center of the labyrinth, have children place a stone at each of the eight marks on the rope. Then. Rotate the rope a couple of feet and lay down another row of eight stones, like a spoke. After placing the marker stones, it's easy to fill in the lines. So that every child has a part in building the labyrinth, we have divided the circle by the number of groups. So each group has a slice of the pie to construct. Be open to suggestions from the children. For example, one child suggested that we put a flat stone at the entrance to the labyrinth so people would have a place to stop and think about how they wanted to use the labyrinth. He called it a pausing stone. And since then, we have placed one at the entrance to every labyrinth we have built. Sometimes when you get in the middle, you can pray. It makes you happy when you, when you walk around it. I decided to go home tonight and say sorry to my sister. I thought about my grandpa looking down on me from heaven. I thought about things we used to do. I want to feel happy about myself because I know he is watching me. Walking the labyrinth, it helps you feel better when you are mad. I'm I'm going going testing. Testing, testing, homework, homework stuff like that. Sometimes that we ask yeah. if testing. Yeah. The yeah. Sometimes we ask the teachers we if they can let us. And then they say yes, or you, if you ask the teacher, they'll probably let you at recess. Yeah. There needs to be a break between the busyness of construction and the quiet first walk of the labyrinth. We sometimes have the children line up around the outside of the labyrinth and hold hands for a moment of silence before walking. One girl said, when we were standing in that circle holding hands, I looked around feeling like the labyrinth was my home.
When walking the labyrinth, it is necessary to allow time and space between each person so that they do not bunch up on the path or in the center. Someone at the entrance can let the children know when they should begin the walk. Standing a few moments on the pausing stone is a good way to prepare for the walk. After the walk, children can share their experiences, thoughts, and feelings. For example, one student talked about her parents' divorce, which allowed other students to talk about how painful this had been for them as well. Some classes have created a labyrinth book for their classroom. It would be very helpful to have a parent volunteer who would assist the teacher during this process, including documenting the building of the labyrinth with photos and organizing the labyrinth book. For photo taking, use a step ladder so you can see the total pattern of the labyrinth more clearly. Videotaping labyrinth activities is something children also love. Planning for the maintenance of the labyrinth and keeping it alive in the school is essential. Include how the physical maintenance will be done, especially during the summer, and who in the school will be responsible for seeing that new staff and students will be introduced to the labyrinth. Another possibility would be to have a labyrinth club with students from each grade. As older students graduate, younger students are added. This would provide continuity from year to year, and these students would be responsible for the physical maintenance, for planning labyrinth events, and for keeping the labyrinth experience alive. There are many ways to use the labyrinth to enhance the lives of children. Some teachers include a labyrinth walk as a part of their daily activities. At times, an activity is organized for the entire school, such as a peace walk, memorial walk, or spring celebration. You've all walked the labyrinth. Yes, <laughs> it's oh, fun it's because we made so it. Well, we could walk through something you well, made. It's fun to walk that, around. And that that it's also nice, peaceful, and calm. Yeah, yeah. and it's your creation, so why not? And, yeah. so, and different people maybe like made different rocks, like painted, painted, them. painted them. We got to paint them. Right. Is your rock still there? Yeah, yeah. We don't know that. <laughs> I think mine. I, I hope mine is. I hope this video and the printed guide will be a help to you to enrich children's lives by giving them their own labyrinth for self-understanding, problem solving, coping with grief, building community, for dealing with the stresses and problems in their lives, and just to provide a moment to be enjoyed.